Here's, uh, who here has heard of TCGA, the Cancer Genome Atlas? Have you heard about anybody? You, you have? You've heard of TCGA? Anybody else? What's that? They mentioned it? Yeah. You have too? I've heard of it. I've never actually Okay. Well, we are today. If you get spend any time in cancer genetics, somebody's going to refer to TCGA like it's the freaking Bible. I swear. <laughs> like people are, I mean, this is basically where we're putting all, like a lot of our, you know, cancer data or omic data is into this portal. And it's basically was created to, to help all the cancer researchers out there. Right. You know, it amazes me, you know, I, I talk to cancer researchers all the time. Like they don't really realize like there's so much data out there. Like you're not the only first person or the only person to work on say breast cancer or like even a weird, like, you know, papillary renal cell carcinoma. Like I'm, there's tons of data out there on that. Like, even like little niche things you think you're, you're working on that no one else is, I guarantee you somebody else is working on it, right? And as I kind of alluded to in my presentation, the more pixels you have, the better, you know, the picture you're going to draw. And there's lots of pixels out there and you can only make so many pixels yourself. So why not absolutely, you know, utilize all that information that's out there. And this as far as cancer goes is, you know, kind of their main site. This is where a lot of like databases and analytical programs are drawing off the data that's in this. Okay. So is everybody on the website? Can you need me to, so just type in, you know, Google the cancer genome Atlas and your first page should look like, look like this. Is everybody on this page? Yep. Okay, cool. All right. Well, let's, we're going to go find us some criminals. We're only going to find some criminals. We're going to find some gangs too. So let's do that. Um, I did give that example of lung cancer. And if you look over here on the right, if you look at all the different, you know, things that they have, you know, the different samples, lung, lung cancer samples are definitely the most they have. So, you know, more data. Let's, let's look at that. So here's what we're going to do is on this page, I want you to go to exploration. So that, that purple kind of, thing click on that everybody with me still cool all right again we can see the cases you know you can go into all of these things there's a lot of edemas adenocarcinomas different projects you know about half and half male half female you know you can look at the vital status but here's what we're going to do so right now we're looking at all you know like all the cases now what we want to do is I want to filter this so it's mostly specific to lung cancer or specific to not only lung cancer, but what I want to do is I want to look at like the really nasty lung cancer too. So I'm going to show you how we filter this data set. All right. And as we can do it, and if you go over here on this first thing, you can click on this genes. This is really cool. So what this is showing you over here is a distribution of the mostly, most frequently mutated genes. What gene is mutated the most in cancers? What? P53? Yes, P53 for sure, by far, right? And is it a good guy or a bad guy? Good guy. Good guy or good person, I'm sorry. <laughs> good person, yes, it is a good person. So, you know, these are... Basically, these, these are all the gangsters. This is, these are the godfathers of cancer that we're looking at right here, right? And again, a lot of these gangsters, you're probably not going to measure directly, but you'll absolutely and utterly see its effects. Some of them you will. All right. So here, over here on the left, we can filter this data set. So let, let's do that right now. All I want to do is I want to look at cases that were found in the lung bronchius or lung. So I want you to click that. And as we click that, you can see the genes change as well. So it's going to reflect all these changes that we do are going to reflect the, uh, the filters we put on it. All right. So keep going down on the left. Also, what I want to do is I want to just look at say ed edemas and adenocarcinomas. So I'm going to click on that first one. 
we could look at squamous cell neoplasms if we wanted to, but actually uh, adenocarcinomas tend to be a more severe form of the cancer, so I want to look at that. Okay. Again, as we're doing all that stuff, you can see these genes, are our godfathers change, right? Now what I want to do is I want to go to clinical. So up here on the left, instead of cases, click the next one to the right, which is clinical. And again, there's lots of things. We could just maybe look at those individuals that died from the cancer, or maybe we want to look at a particular race. Well, maybe we only want to look at the African-American uh, cohort, right? Lots of ways to cut this cake. But let's go down to diagnoses, and all the way down you'll find this AJCC pathological stage. Click on that, and you should have some things open up for you. Okay. What do you think is the most severe form based on these stages? What do you think? Any ideas? How do you think the stages go? Has anybody heard of stages before? Cancer stages, right? What do you think is the most severe? Uh, this list. Is there a stage four? Well, actually, there might be. There is stage four. But you're right. You know, basically what I was trying to get you is, is there's a lot of like different cancers have different stages, but almost always it goes from like a lower number or a, you know, alphabetically to higher, right? So stage one or I or whatever the heck they're calling it is, is going to be less severe than stage II, right? But here's what I want to do is it's, let's go to stage 3A. Seems to be more severe. So I'm gonna click on that. And you can see as I click on that, the distribution of most frequently mutated genes changes as well. So if I click off it again, right, I got P53, KRAS, FAT4, EGFR, and then this STK11. If I click on that 3A, now you can see that STK11 is now the fourth highest, right? So now what I've done is I've not only selected lung cancer, a specific form of lung cancer, which is adenocarcinoma, and now what I'm at is, and then I've decided, okay, what I want to do is just look at the more severe forms. And actually what we can do here so let's just do anything higher than 3A. So I, I click stage 3A. I'm also going to cl cl click on stage 3B. And then let's look at stage 4 as well. Okay. So now what we're doing is we're looking at, we've got 121 cases where this is going on. Right? Lung cancer, adenocarcinoma, stage 3A or higher. So severe stuff. All right, let's find our chemical or our criminal. <laughs> so if we go here over here to the genes, right, we can look at cases and we can see what all that stuff is. Right? In 53 of these cases, you know, the individual is alive at the last, you know, during the sampling and 67 of them died. And I don't know what's going on here. Not reported in one case. But we can go back to genes. So as I was looking at it, when I was coming up with the, the, and look at the survival rate. Oh my gosh, that's horrible, right? You know, after five years, you know, 80% of the people, you know, at this stage with in these samples die right but as i'm looking here okay so my you know i know p53 i'm gonna have a hard time finding its gang you know because it doesn't really change in expression so i'm gonna kind of ignore that kras people you know study the heck out of it same with egfr but who here has heard of stk11 anybody no 
Yeah, before this, I really hadn't heard of too much about it, which made me think, well, let's investigate this criminal, right? This thing is the fourth most mutated gene in this, you know, in this subgroup. Like, it's got to be pretty important, right? So we can go down here. We can see these genes. So this is ser serine threonine kinase 11. These are small single mutations. And in our 121 samples, 24 of them have a mutation in STK11. And we can get all this information. We can see it affected across, you know, you know, so we know it's involved in this particular crime. If we look at, so when it's mutated, like basically across the, the entire portal, right, all the cancers, you know, it's absolutely mutated. And then if we look over here, we can see, you know, in this particular cohort, there was six times where we saw a gain and there was nine times where we saw a loss of this gene. Right. And here are the number of mutations on it. There was 25 known different mutations for this gene. So let's do that. So on STK11, what I want you to do on the gene itself, click on it. You should see this. Don't read the description yet. Okay, not yet, because I want to ask you some things. Again, what we're doing now is we identified a potential criminal, now we're going through its criminal history on this, right? We're seeing, based on, uh, you know, does it make sense that this is gonna be a big player in, in what we're looking at? So if I look down here and we go to cancer distribution, right, three disease types, bronchial lung, you know, it's basically giving us the same information here. But in six of these, you lose it, and not, or six you gain, um, you gain it, and nine of these, we, we're losing it. What do you think it is? Do you think it's a good guy or a bad guy? Good person, bad person, I'm sorry. Is this an oncogene or a tumor suppressor? What do you think? Why would you say that? <laughs> That's why I said don't read it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Very good. Yes, that's exactly right. We look here, you know, it's most, most of the time when a gene gets mutated, usually it's a bad thing for the gene. You know, it's, it's, it's something destructive. I mean, you do have mutations like KRAS or something where you might mutate a regulatory element and, you know, and then it's not like bad, you know, then it enhances activity. But a lot of mutations, what it does is actually decrease its activity. And sure enough, for here, we're seeing more losses with this particular gene. So, yeah, we would absolutely not really think of that. And if we can go down here, we can see all the mutations that were found in all those samples. Like... So here's the gene itself, and here's where we're finding like a group of mutations here and a group of mutations here, right? And this seems to be the start, you know, around the start. Like, why do you think the grouping's here? Like, like, what's that? Promoter region, absolutely, right? This might be the eyes of the cop, right? So this is, these are the bad guys trying to shoot the cop, right? And it's trying to hit it in its eyes right here. And then it's trying to get its heart right here, probably, right? But you don't see two, you don't see any mutations here, right? Like the cop may be wearing body armor. Like this is exactly what, you know, these oncogenes do, right? It's this tug of war. And it's like, how do I disable this police officer or how do I blind him or how do I like, you know, or just, you know, decapitate him? And if you look at these, these mutations, these aren't like, Nice mutations, they're like frameship, stop gain, missense. Like these are things that are bad, usually bad for the protein. You know, and you can go in here and you can see exactly what those mutations are and get any of that information. Okay. 
So if we go back to the top, let's get some more. And also this, this gene is also known as LKB1. So keep that in mind because we're going to probably go through some other stuff. So again, if you read the description, sure enough, again, we're getting background information on our criminal or actually our good guy. You know, it regulates cell polarity and functions as a tumor suppressor. You know, it's been associated with uh, other cancers as well. Let's get some more information. So everybody has, did everybody bookmark the TCGA webpage? Be sure to bookmark that. You can keep it in a special folder for, you know, say this is bioinformatics stuff. Again, I, you know, I want you to go back and actually use this. Like I can't teach you everything about this software today, but you can absolutely go back and play around with it. And it's not that hard to use. Again, I have taught this to high school kids. I have taken a high school class and we did lung cancer and breast cancer analysis and it was better than most grad students I had seen out there. Like this isn't hard and this is where you guys have the advantage. I guarantee you your 60 year old PI is not going to understand this stuff, right? You guys will and that's what they depend on. Like you're going to get this way more than your boss is and if you get this you become very valuable in that system. Trust me, everybody's looking for a bioinformatician. <laughs> Everybody. And the great thing, you know, and that's the thing, is you find a bioinformatician, then they're like, oh, i probably get to it in about two months. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> like, do it now. I think that was part of the reason, like, I even became a bioinformatician. I just got sick of, like, waiting for, like, my statistician or somebody to, like, do, you know, go, oh, i got some time. Yeah, let's do it. And then it'll take them, like, three weeks and... It's like, crap, I'm going to do this on my own. I will say that, and this is my personal opinion, I, I never understood, you know, and I see this all the time. You see this lab group, and they put together this huge experiment. They've obviously written a grant. It might have taken years to basically put together. It gets funded. That takes some time. they got to hire postdocs, set up experiments, buy animals, antibiotics. They do all of this stuff, you know. Sacrifice the mice, running westerns, you know, doing the sequencing. And at the very end, they get all the data and they go, here, and they give it to like a computer person that doesn't understand the biology, right? You, as an, a scientist, should be analyzing your own data. And in fact, like, that's the best part. Like, if you are one of those scientists that, I mean, there are some people that enjoy running westerns all the time. I hate it. <laughs> RT-PCR, I hated it. Like, like that's just, that's to get me to the good stuff, right? And that's kind of why I've, you know, I started at the bench, but I've moved into this because this is where the dessert is. Like, I just want to eat dessert all the time. Like, it's great. I will say, you know, having that experience at the bench makes me appreciate the data that I do get. And I'm not saying that that is not important because it absolutely is. It's just that, when you get to a certain point, it's like, you know, am I just doing the techniques? Like, you know, really the science is the interpretation and this is a, absolutely and utterly the interpretation and you can do it yourself. I guarantee it. You don't have to program either, at least not much.